Hey guys, Kaylin at Open Mill Farm. I uh, did not intend to make this video today. However, when I opened the incubator to get ready to set more eggs today, the smell was really bad. So somewhere in there I have a rotten egg. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a candling video. Um, I'm gonna have to get everything set up and it'll be in the dark. So I'll be right back after I get that done. All right guys, I've got my eggs out. I've got my camera set up. I need both hands to do this. So I had to put it on the stand. Um, I need one hand to hold an egg and one hand to hold the flashlight. Um, I got my flashlight ready and I actually got really lucky. The very first egg I pulled up is the one that's cracked. Um, I'm guessing because it's on the end like that. Sometimes the egg trays when they shift, if the egg is not in the hole real good, they can kind of smack against the side. I don't like that the egg trays don't fit perfectly in the turner, the automatic turner, but I mean, I guess it's just a design flaw because I mean, it, it's put together correctly. Like it, the cabinet comes put together, but just so every now and then I'll end up one with one that kind of got cracked a little bit. And when they get cracked, they do start to stink as they start to rot. Um, so I'm gonna set that one aside. And then I'm gonna show you, normally I wait till day 10 to do this. Um, because the blood vessels and stuff are actually really really clear by day 10 by day 7 There's still some that I'm iffy on um, But I'm gonna go ahead and do it since I already have them out Normally, it's easiest on these lighter colored ones to see through And so you can see on that one. I mean the veins are really clear right there And as you rotate you see that they kind of go around and as this progresses those veins get darker and more pronounced um, this is the air cell and as this goes along, that air cell will actually get bigger and bigger and start to come down. And you can actually judge roughly how far along in the incubation period it is based on the size of the egg cell or the air cell in the egg. Um, because like I said, the eggs are porous and so they evaporate as they incubate. Um, but this one's looking pretty good. Lots of times these darker ones are really hard to see and yeah so that one first of all that one's actually really porous and normally I would not incubate that one it's also so dark that I'm not gonna be able to tell for sure if there's a baby in this one for quite a while um, so I'm gonna leave it alone here's another porous one you can see all the the different color of the egg so like the light spots those are actually porous spots and I found the incubation rate is not really good the hatch rate on these guys um, I don't know if they just evaporate too fast. I'm not real sure what goes on with them, but normally I don't um, actually hatch these guys, but I don't have as many eggs as I normally do just because we're beginning of the season. And I'm getting about a dozen eggs right now a day, and normally I'll be getting 30 to 40 a day. So I don't have quite as many to pick and choose from. And this time I just picked based on who has the right size for, or right shape for hatching because the chicks seem to do better when the eggs are shaped right. Here's another dark one. You can barely see the air cell there, but I can't tell for sure if there's a baby in there or not. So this one will get to stay. There might be some veins right there, but I'm not positive. And the more you do it, the better you get at it. So I can see some really faint veins in this one and the air cell. And like I said, these light colored ones are usually the easiest to see in. That one's got some good veins there. And normally what I do is I just work my way. I start at one end and work my way through and pull out any that don't have veins. I mean, there's some good veins. Um, and then I'll put back in after I've picked out all the bad ones and leave all the good ones. And like I said, normally I do this at day 10 and I actually may pull these guys out again at day 10 just to show you the difference. But this is day seven and if you're new at this, I would not toss an egg you're not sure of unless it has an actual crack in it or stinks or something. I mean, there's no real reason to toss them this early um, because I'd rather leave them and be right than pull them out and be wrong. Occasionally I run into some, I'm not seeing any yet, where I got it wrong and I put the fat in down. And so that air cell, I'll actually, when I pull it out, I'll go like this and I won't see the air cell and I have to realize that I had it upside down. And so I go ahead and flip those over at that point um, so that when it's time for hatching, the chick will actually pop its head up into that air cell and that's where it gets its first oxygen. So you want them to be able to reach that pretty well. Here's another one. This one's a little iffy on the porous. Um, depending on the amount of eggs I have, I may or may not hatch that one. 
I prefer them not to be very porous at all. Here's a green one that you can pretty much see all the veining right there. But really, you just work your way through. I start and go row by row and work my way through, tossing the bad ones. Um, like I said, you do get better at it within time. And when I first started, I actually wouldn't toss anybody to lockdown. But these days, I don't have the patience for that. And so I just toss them as soon as I'm sure that there's nothing in there. But there's nothing wrong with waiting. I mean, unless they're rotting, there's, there's no problem. Um, but that's how I do a candling at day seven. I'm going to go through the second tray and see what they look like. And actually, I'll probably pull out a duck in a few minutes and do show you that one real quick. But other than that, that's all there is to it. Okay, I'm going to show you the duck eggs real quick, even though there's not actually anything to see. Um, and I'm showing you this because I just want you to remember that if you're incubating and stagger hatching, so even though these eggs were set at the same time, because they're duck eggs, there's going to be no evidence of that baby yet because duck eggs take 28 days instead of 21 like chicken. So as you can see, there's no sign of veins yet. There's no little heart. There's really nothing for you to see it. However, I did find this nasty thing. This is a duck egg that as you can see has a crack and it was apparently cracked when I washed them and all that probably actually in the coop and you can see all that black nastiness. That is bacteria, that's disgustingness. Um, I'm actually gonna take this tray and I'm gonna spray the entire tray and all the eggs with peroxide just to cover my base. And while that one smelled bad, this one smells really bad. And so this was actually where my rot was coming from. Um, but you can see right now, early on, it's real clear to me that that's rot. After a while, once they get bigger, you'll have to start watching for the duck to move to know the difference between the shadows of a duck or the shadows of rot. But this is 100% rot, and you can see how it oozes and is gross and all that nastiness. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in the woods where I don't have to smell it anymore. But like I said, um, don't forget that your duck eggs, you know, they're gonna take longer than the chickens to show web or you know vein webbing and everything so don't freak out on them and forget and toss them because these are all still probably perfectly good eggs minus the nasty rotten one um and so in probably next week when i candle the chick eggs that i'm putting in here um i'll candle these guys again and hopefully by then i can show you just how clear you can see the ducks and everything but that's everything for today. That's my day seven candling. Um, I'll candle again in a few days to give it, you know, much better picture for you guys. But I'm just glad to have the stinky one out. And thanks for stopping by and watching. Bye.